You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is The Raids Remains by Cameron Bloomfield. Their village had been burning since morning, and now the sun was setting, a blood-red disk behind thick smoke that rose from smoldering ruins. They had awoken to the screams of kinsmen, and even though their pain had long since been silenced, those who fled heard them still. Three survivors now trudged through dark, stony hills, desperate to escape their pursuers. Da, said Lenore, reaching up to tug at her father's frayed sleeve. I'm so tired. Sulf felt the same. He was a shambling mess carrying the few possessions that remained to him tied in a knapsack that hung from the hose slung over his shoulder. Everything else he owned was ashes. But still he had his family. Few from home could say that. Ignoring the cramps, he stooped over and picked up his daughter with a painful grimace, cradling her in his free arm. Can I sleep, doll? She said, her eyelids already drooping as she nuzzled into his shoulder. I get some rest, girl, he said, but she had already fallen asleep. We won't make it to Brackenford tonight, said Esther, his wife, who hadn't spoken since they fled their homestead. Her eyes were distant, her voice frantic. Let's rest. The beasts would have caught up to us by now. We're safe here. We're safe, Sulf. Sulf sighed. Brackenford may not be there tomorrow. We keep moving. We have to warn our neighbors. And then, maybe, we'll be safe. Don't say that, she said, before returning to her muted shuffle. Sulf felt shame for his thoughtless words. He had shattered what little hope Esther had left. He turned back to his wife to apologize, but no words left his lips. He growled in hatred at the sight below. Weaving their way up the rocky ascent were two pinpoints of light. The beat of hooves and the sinister cackle of mirthless laughter began to echo through the hills. Take her he said to Esther, passing the sleeping child to his wide-eyed wife. Run and hide. I'll meet you in Brackenford tomorrow. He unslung his hoe and slid off the knapsack, throwing it to the side. Don't stop, said Sol, as he stroked the hair of his sleeping daughter. He knew it would be the last time he would touch her curls. Esther's eyes were watering. Go. She shook her head. Salf growled, pushing her away. Go, woman. Salf turned away, his hoe gripped firmly in his large hands. The need to protect his family had found the little energy that remained in him. And his hatred of those beasts burned inside him, fueling him. He snarled, baring his long, pointed teeth. The voices were getting louder, the flames from their torches growing brighter. Sulf looked back. Esther and Lenore were gone. He sighed in relief. He knew he wouldn't meet them at Brackenford tomorrow, and Esther knew it too. But he would try to keep them safe, and if not, give them as much time as he could. His calloused hands ran down the shaft of the hoe. They were shaking. He was not a fighter, but he'd do whatever it took to keep them safe. The orc leapt from the craggy hillside onto a mounted soldier, knocking him off his horse. The soldier hit the ground with a jangle of chainmail, his torch landing next to him with a hiss. The flames cast a hellish light on the beast that towered over him. It was yelling ferociously in a twisted tongue as the soldier groaned in pain, winded. 
the creature raised its weapon, a simple farming hoe that seemed an axe in an executioner's hand. Yellow eyes glowed in monstrous rage as it snarled and brought down its weapon. But the tool fell from limp fingers as the feathers of an arrow shaft jutted out of the orc's neck. The beast fell to one knee, spluttering blood and wheezing until it collapsed. Emerging from the darkness, Benson got off his horse and rushed to his comrade. Holding his bow in his left hand, he reached down with his right. The swearing man took it. He nearly had you, Hayden. Sneaky brutes, he said, as he was pulled to his feet, his voice a mingle of fury and relief. Not the last of them, Benson said hopefully, as he walked over to the orc. Hayden picked up his torch. Ah, there were three sets of feet that led this way. Two more to go, Ben. Use that unsightly melon you call a head. It was just the mate and their offspring. The other feet were smaller than this, Brutes. Benson looked at the thrashing feet of the dying orc and placed his boot on its head. He gripped the arrow and pulled it out, shaking it free from the blood before he returned it to its quiver. Yes, but they can still warn the others, Benson. And remember, the little ones grow up, he said, mounting his horse as he looked over the dead monster with disdain. Come on, let's get it over with. It's cold, and the quicker we're back at camp, the better. Benson pulled himself onto his saddle as his companion rode off. He paused, looking down at the dead creature. He had seen orcs before today, vicious, savage warriors who showed no quarter and were every bit as terrifying as campsite stories made them out to be. But he had also seen men be just as frightening when he was on the other side of the weapon. They're monsters, he told himself, trying to forget the screams of the day's raid. Covering his doubts with the assurance of his captain, he kicked in the stirrups and rode after the remaining orcs. This was The Raid's Remains by Cameron Bloomfeld. Cameron is currently brushing up on his Japanese for an upcoming teaching interview and wrote this to procrastinate when he really should have been hitting the books. In his spare time, he jams out on his guitar, reads, and enjoys killing his friend's characters as a merciless dungeon master, and occasionally volunteers as a grief counselor. He has written two horrendous novels that will never see the light of day, but is currently seeking representation for his comedy fantasy, which his test readers adored, and he is sure that they are in no way biased. He is sorely out of touch with his generation and has only just joined social media. Say hi on Twitter at the worst author. Check our show notes for links. Music is provided by Mads. Learn more about 600 Second Saga, our authors, how to submit your flash fiction, and how to support the podcast in the show notes. This has been Mariah Avix and 600 Second Saga.